Marianne DeMarco is an internationally recognized psychic medium, author, healer, and spiritual teacher. Through her work, she translates messages into practical guidance and advice for happier and fulfilling lives. Her signature mind, body, and soul-focused readings are as motivational and empowering as they are validating and reassuring. As a spiritual teacher, she teaches over 250 students per year, both individually and via virtual workshop classes on how to develop connections and intuition for day-to-day living or for professional practice. Marianne has been featured expert across various media outlets, including the New York Times, Women's Health, and the Dr. Oz Show, among others. She is also the author of Believe, Ask, Act, Divine Steps to Raise Your Intuition, Create Change, and Discover Happiness. I'm so excited to introduce you to my friend and fellow colleague, Marianne. I absolutely adore her candid nature and her lovingly fierce spirit. Join us as we discuss mediumship, co-creating our lives, and the power of surrender. I'm so grateful to have you as part of this podcast. I think it's so much fun to work with other mediums. So oh, thank- Rebecca, you don't even know. So I I watched you. I saw you like first on Dr. Oz, I think way back yeah. when, right? And I was Long like, time ago. She looks like, like she's normal. You know, <laughs> like you were my... Like, People tell me like, oh, you look so normal. You were my normal. I was like, she's normal. We're, wow. She could do this. She just looks like like a person that I would totally hang out with. I love so it. So I've always wanted to thank you for that because um, you really normalized something that otherwise could have been very uncomfortable for me personally. Wow, and so that's... I always kind of referenced you for that. So thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. That to me is the greatest compliment because, you know, I'm sure like you, I lived a pretty typical life up until I was 20. Right. Mm-hmm. And so yep. once I realized this, this is, I mean, this subject matter, not so much now, but 20 years ago, it was kind of woo woo. And oh, so definitely woo woo for right? sure. And oh so yeah. We got to stay grounded. Um, but mm-hmm. anyways, that's awesome. So synchronistically, I always love talking about how our paths cross. You saw me there on Dr. Oz. And then a couple of years later at my, we shared the same editor with one of my books And, um, I got a copy of your book and so I read it and I loved it. And, um, anyways, that was the beginning. And then, you know, fast forward several years, just a couple months ago, Gabby Bernstein brought us back together and we did the round table. So anyways, it's everything for a reason and all into divine timing, right? Divine timing, divine timing. Yep. Yeah. Um, what I love about you I love so many things about you, but you are so approachable and down to earth and again, making it relatable and keeping it real. Um, And your book in Believe, Ask, Act, it's all Mm -hmm. about manifesting. And I'm I'm such a believer in that we co-create our lives, right? Our future is not set in stone. Absolutely. And that that when I wrote it, I remember when I first started out, I started thinking, oh, you know, I remember being younger and really trying to understand what all of this was and looking for a book that would tell me in a simple way, how, what is this and how can I work with it? And so that's why I wrote the book because I had so many people saying to me, how do I do that? How can I do that? Or I'm not mm-hmm. able to do this, right? But we all can do this. We can so, all do this. Yeah, we can all do it. And so to your point, yes, nothing set in stone. We have the power, the light within us to manifest. And I did want it to feel feel very approachable. So thank you, because that's how I wanted to receive it. That's what you gave me um, in watching you and watching your career grow. And so that's what I wanted the practice to be for other people, that it's just really approachable and that it's within us. It's, it should feel so second nature and natural. I was brought up that way. I was, you know, my grandmother was a spiritualist. My mom is really into all of this. And so it was very normalized for me. And I wanted other people to feel that normal. Oh, you are so blessed because, you know, so many people, myself included, were not brought up in the world of paranormal and not necessarily open. And so you had no resistance. So how old were you when you started to really open up to all of this? When I was, I remember being very little and uh, feeling things and seeing things, dreaming Uh, My dreams were incredibly vivid. I would have the same dreams as my mother. She would complete the dreams for me. I would start to tell her about a dream and then she would complete it and tell me what the rest of the dream was about. And we did that for many years. 
And then as, as I grew up and I started to understand that I was having visits from other people and understanding what really the psychic or medium world was about, mm -hmm. what other realms were about. My mother was teaching me how to meditate, higher levels of consciousness, your guides. I mean, ever since wow. I was little. So I knew it was there. I just didn't know how to do it. I didn't understand how to, how to hear it mm -hmm. and then, you know, give the information over. I just thought I was really opinionated all the time, you know, just giving right. really guided New York right. Italian advice. Right. And so I didn't think that it was, that was it. Um, and it wasn't until I got into my thirties actually. And I went to a teacher, Pat Longo, and she taught me how to finally understand how to process that information. Wow. And once she amazing. told me spirit comes in your own voice, that was it. It just made perfect sense to me. Okay. That's well, that's fantastic that you found somebody because I think finding a really good mentor mm -hmm. um, can make all the difference in taking you out of doubt into that deep faith and trust. Yes. So, so are you primarily clairaudient? Is that how it started? I see, I know hear, and feel. Yeah, I yeah. do. Um, I started seeing first when I was little. I would see things, not always the most comfortable visions, but I would see right. certain things. And I had premonitions a lot as a teenager. I knew things were going to happen. Uh, I can remember seeing, you know, like I said, not the most positive things because our frame of reference when we're that age, we have no filter. We just sort of let everything right. come in. And so I remember seeing, um, you know, what, what death looked like, what it smelled like. I remember seeing uh, energies pass by you know, in my home and just weird things like that and not knowing, but I was never afraid of it. I was much more curious, like, what the heck was that? Right. And then as I developed my skills over and over my abilities and I practiced and I went to classes, I was able to start seeing and hearing and understanding how it all was put together. Exactly. Yeah. Because like you, so I started with clairaudience, but in doing this, you start adding on, you know, the clairvoyance, clairsentience, yep. claircognizance, and now I do all of them simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But yep. some of us, I think people in listening, you know, they might be asking themselves, how do I get my information? And if you're a visual person, look to your clairvoyance. If your dreams are vivid, meditations clear, right? Mm -hmm. Or yep. if you're a writer, you know, or you write it music. out. Yeah. Use your imagination. I tell people use the visualization that comes most natural to you. Mm. So if you want to sit and visualize a loved one next to you and have a conversation, do that. That is them enhancing your energy and allowing themselves to be in your space, invite them in your dreams. If you like writing is one of my favorite ways to communicate. Right. Um, I always tell people, pay attention to all the senses, not just your six, you know, what are you smelling? What are you tasting? What memory pops into your head mm -hmm. uh, out of nowhere? And those are, that's all communication from energy from the other side. And it, it can is. be really um, validating if you ease into it. So did you ever go through a period where you doubted what you were? Oh receiving? gosh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was, I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there's always a hesitation. Um, where you, you, you go to read somebody and you think, gosh, I hope I hear something today. You know, hope right? it comes through with clarity. Yes, absolutely. Do you ever but, have it? Do you ever have it where you can't read somebody? Yes, I have had that happen. Have you had that happen? Of course, all the yes. time. Well, not all and, the time. Cancel, cancel. You know, it's happened. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's happened. And it's happened in a way where I've had to put my ego aside. I had to learn how to do that when that, you know, it's not, like you said, it's not all the time, but when it does, it's noticeable. And really dissect the energy, learn from it, you know, but yeah, there's just times when you're just not meant to read somebody for well, whatever reason. That's just it. And it's pretty rare. I think when that happens, because if they're in front of us, I believe spirit brought us together to mm -hmm. make that connection. But I guess in my experience, it's been, I can, I can read anybody on a psychic level, but they're not coming to me for that. They want the mediumship. There's a loved one who died. We can't control if that departed loved one comes forward or not. Right. Agreed. And, oh, and yes, so absolutely. That's where sometimes we can't make that connection. And I'm sure you're the same way, but I don't force it. I don't go no. in the sea of the dead. I let them come to me. Yeah. Yep. And I tell people what you hear is what you are supposed to hear. Spirit is in charge. I'm just the conduit. I am. I am not the director, I'm not the maestro exactly. here. Like they come in and they tell me what to say. And so if you are going for a psychic reading or psychic medium reading, be open to any information that comes in because yeah, it can create an odd block. If you're focusing on one thing or focusing on one person, you might miss all these great messages that spirit has lined up for you. Uh, exactly. You know? I know. Yeah. And, um, 
Oh, I just lost what I was going to. Oh, no. So do people um, come to you for you? We just talked about co-creating your future. Do you get a lot of people asking you to predict the future? Yes. Yes. What and you, I, what have, are your thoughts I have boundaries. Well, it depends. So I'm a firm believer in trying to navigate people along with spirit that yes and no questions might not always serve us best. And that if we can understand to in receiving the guidance is far more productive to get you to your yes or no answer, mm -hmm. that the journey is way more exciting than just getting the quick answer. So uh, I tell them that I tell them that if you're coming to me for that, and you want to do some life plan type of things, and you want to hear psychic stuff, it just depends on what frequency they put me in spirit, whether I'm reading you psychically, mediumship wise, you know, I can change frequency all around. But yeah, I mean, I'll give them as much as I can. I don't do world predictions. That's a boundary. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Not, not, so I think all of us um, intuitives have different areas kind of, of expertise, you mm -hmm. know, just like all doctors, you know, are trained in the basics and then they yep. pick your specialty. What do you think your specialty is? As of late, it's been motivational guidance. It's been uh, teaching people how to understand their own abilities, how they can access and tap into that anytime they want. And then allowing that to come to the forefront with their own intuition, making their own decisions along with spirit and understanding what all of that means, why they're here, their service, all those questions that we're talking about that they want answered. Right. Uh, and I love, I, I mean, I, I'll always be a medium. I mean, I, I right. love connecting people with their loved ones on the other side. But what I have found is it's coming from everywhere. It's it coming is. from their loved ones. It's coming from their guides and that they want people to un wake up. We're waking mm -hmm. people up. And that's, that, that I think has been the focus past few months. It's really yeah. been uh, a guided focus. Well, it's interesting because likewise, in the sense that mm -hmm. people who are coming to me are aware and awake and they want the next level of that. Yes, they want yes. understanding how can I be of service and what yes. is my soul's purpose? You know? Isn't that an exciting shift? It is. I yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it because I think that more and more people are coming to me with just completely honoring the fact that their loved ones are on the other side. There's no question. They're not even thinking about really that anymore. They're accepting that they know, and they just want to have access how they can hear their own guidance. And I, and I find it fascinating. So that doubt and that fear is starting to wane. The right. belief system is getting bigger and bigger. It's getting uh, far more broad mm -hmm. and that I'm seeing more and more people. And I'm sure you are too, who are asking, how can I tap in? And I'm happy to do that. I love doing that work. I, I do too. It's, yeah. you know, the veil is thinning between this dimension and the spirit world. And mm -hmm. again, I think those of us who are willing and open to advance, then it's becoming easier. And yep. so are you offering like, um, mentorship or training, teaching? Yep. I'm giving workshops and um, I do mentor pro private mentoring programs one-on-one. -on -one. And it's so exciting because it's not just people who want to be psychic mediums. It's people who want to use this in their own lives and how they can uh, just access and tap in and, and just take it to a next level. So I, I really love it. Some of them absolutely want to go into this, you know, as a career and as their service, but a lot of people just are like, I know something's there. I can feel it. Right. I just don't know how to access that. And that's what my guides are helping them. Their guides are helping them with. I love that. It's empowering people, you know, it because is. we don't yeah. want to make people dependent on anything outside of themselves. And that's beautiful. So when we were doing Gabby's um, round table discussion, you said something that I love so much and I want you to kind of expand on it. You, we're talking about the intention for delivering messages and you have mm -hmm. this the care, concern and compassion. Compassion. You talk that? Yes. But, well, I, I was talking about how we deliver a message and what the intention should be behind that. And that the idea and what I teach my students is always delivering a message with um, care and compassion and kindness. We have to be very careful because we have people's feelings in our hands. Yes. And you know, when people are sitting with you, they want, they are waiting to hear from their loved one. We don't want to scare them. We don't want to give a message that might sound foreboding. And so um, I'm very careful to teach and myself to give messages that have the greater good of all concern behind them. 
And that's where that comes from. So I always feel that if you're sitting down with a psychic or a medium or you yourself are delivering, we should be delivering light in its best possible form. Not that we wouldn't want to see a warning or see something that we can help out with, but that it should be feel productive. Absolutely. I always say the same thing and that, you know, we're doing this to heal and help not hurt Mm -hmm. or harm anybody. Um, You know, as this field becomes more acceptable and common um, as it has the last several years, you start noticing there's more and more psychics and mediums popping up all over the place. And I always tell people like, you need to be discerning as with any profession, there's going to be those that don't work in integrity. And you need to, you know, I always think um, word of mouth is the best way to find out about somebody. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you pick somebody out of the yellow pages, um, you know, you need to trust your feelings. Like when you sit with that, that intuitive, you need to make sure, like you said, it feels like it's coming from the right place. It should, if it feels I've had, unfortunately, I have had clients come to me who have been scared by messages that were given saying they were cursed or, you know there's some sort of horror that's about to happen in their lives. And I always tell people, if you start to hear very negative or heavy messages coming from somebody, pick up your things and leave, take your money and go, because that's not the type of energy you want to place yourself in. And as you know, the universe responds to, it doesn't respond to just negative or positive, it just responds. We want to be able to give light, most positive outcome uh, with, you know, very detailed and, compassionate messages behind them that somebody can find useful and to have a takeaway. My biggest thing is I want them to have a takeaway. When you read, I know this, people have a takeaway. You know, they walk away with, with a guidance that you're giving and that's a gift. And so that's how I feel like messages should be delivered. And right. And to your point, that's why I like classes. If you're going to be a psychic, if you're going to be a medium train and how to do that, and not only for the person that you're sitting with, but for your own energy. Oh, it's so true. So important. I mean, it took me a lot of years to learn this. I was a slow learner, but I, I would give my energy away and not, I didn't know how to call it back. And I became, really? yeah, yes, totally freely. I was reading almost every day because, you know, it's fun. Right. There's this excitement to it. And, you know, you're, you're like, wow, this, this is the stuff that I've been, I've known I can do. And here it is. And so you, and you want to help people and you want to give that energy and give that energy. And just like you, I learned that lesson the hard way several times. Yeah, I know. I keep relearning that lesson. Right, right. Because you get exhausted. And I don't know about you, but my guides will cancel appointments on me. They will shift my schedule around and they'll cancel mm-hmm. appointments. I will say all day, I don't think I'm supposed to read that person today. And I know that's my guide actually telling me that. And sure enough, they'll either cancel or something. I love, I love when they take care of it for you. <laughs> yep. Isn't it great? Yeah, it is. Um, so Okay. So speaking to all of that, we are in crazy times right now. And I think people are desperate for some hope and just some reassurance that everything's going to be okay. And how do I get through this gracefully? And Mm -hmm. what do you tell your clients when they feel ungrounded and anxious? I tell them that first of all, don't try and fight your anxious, your anxiousness, Um, allow yourself to work through that with your guides if it's your spiritual toolbox is your own, if it's breath work, if it's meditation, if it's writing, find a go-to exercise, walking, listening to music, whatever that may be, just to help out with that anxiousness. And then the other thing is what I have been telling people is let's honor the moment as well in its stillness. Um, we, are at, we are at a moment when we can, we really are being forced to sit with ourselves, aren't we? And really trying to understand what that means. And so if you are having a question of what, what am I going to do What's my service? How am I going to manifest that? This is a great time to do that. It's a great time to put forth in writings and manifestations and soul contracts, what it is that you want to put out there into the world. And so trying to tell people to honor that. What I see and what I feel is comfort coming. Um, You know, I do have a peacefulness about what's coming forward, but I don't do world events. You know, you and I were talking about that, but I will, I do like to tap into the energy And I'm calm about that. So I'm hoping that that is a flow that we go with. Don't try and chase anything right now. When I sit in a flow of things, I myself even calm down. I'm sure you've had anxiety these days and, you know, feeling it, especially if we're, we're all so empathic, right. Taking in all that energy. I turn off the news when I can, and I just try to sit in that flow. And I find that very calming. 
I love all of that. And I, I just remind myself and I remind my clients, there's a reason you're alive right now. We, we signed up for this. We were born mm-hmm. to be going through this and we all have different lessons and takeaways. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all connected. We're all one. And, you know, it's just really remembering to take your power back when you've given it away. Right. Yes. Figuring mm-hmm. out ways to ground and get centered and, and feel like you're connected to something bigger mm-hmm. and then co-create, you know, what the outcome, the future you want to see. That's right. And trust. trust. When you've asked your yeah. sign, when you've asked for your signs and you've seen them, when you've written it down and you've done your manifesting and you've sat in meditation and you've had that conversation with your guides, trust it and move and, on. Right. Let it go. Let it go. I think that's about the surrender. I think that is the <laughs> surrender is hard. It's so hard, isn't it? It is, especially but it is the most powerful thing we can do. I is. think it's the biggest form of trust in, in this work. And when you're uh, working from a spiritual space just for yourself, when you let go, when you put it out there, you've done your work on it and you let it go. I find it's, for myself, I just feel like it's the most powerful validation you can give yourself. It always seems to unfold. You watch that unfolding with such clarity. It's so cool. My mantra lately has been let go, let God. So yes. Just repeat that over and over. Give it mm-hmm. to God. Trust you've done your part and the rest will take care of itself. Agreed. Yeah. Well, yep. this has been so much fun connecting with you. Thank you for the good work you're doing. And for inspiring Thank you. Inspiring me. Oh, I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm so excited about being on here with you today. And this has been just a joy. So thank you so much for having me anytime. Okay. We'll do it again. (laughs) Great. Well, blessings. We'll see you later. Thanks, Rebecca. Bye. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Small Medium at Large. To register for one of my Rebecca Rosen live online events or virtual small group readings, and to sign up for my newsletter, please visit my website. RebeccaRosen.com. There you will also find additional resources for your spiritual journey, including my self-guided courses, books, and blog videos. You can also follow me on social media by searching at Medium Rebecca Rosen on Facebook and Instagram. As always, wishing you brightest blessings and all love.